Greetings, welcome to God's house on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Our worship focus is Jesus leads the way. Of course, his way is always the right way. And he leads us on that way, especially through his word. We worship first uh, singing our first hymn, number 475, The Man is Ever Blessed, verses 1, 2, and 3. of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Almighty 
God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy and to bring forth fruits in faith and hope and love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Ezekiel chapter 34, where God promises to raise up a good shepherd to lead his people. Of course, Jesus is that good shepherd who leads us. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, the sleek, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. I will place over them one shepherd my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. For our psalm today, we read responsibly from Psalm 65. Praise awaits you, O God. You are all for us. You care for the land and water it. You saw them in the showers and the lands were crossed. The streams of God are filled with water. To provide the people with good rain. You crown the year with your bounty. And your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson is from Romans 11, verses 33 to 36, where we again hear of Jesus leading us as he led the Apostle Paul to see the riches and depths of his love and grace. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Here ends our epistle lesson. Alleluia. The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. So you may obey it. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson is recorded in Matthew 6, beginning with verse 19. Glory be to you, O Lord. And in our gospel lesson, we are reminded that Jesus leads us to serve him. He gives us a, a heart that is one for him. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, 
and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This is the gospel of our Lord. We confess the faith that God has planted in our hearts with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, about 15 years ago, Nintendo introduced a new gaming system, and that gaming system changed the way people thought of video games. No longer were you playing video games with a controller in your hands, you could actually move your arm or your hand and the, the video game system would register that. 
They called it the Wii. And so they introduced a whole line of sports games where you could actually play tennis and swing the controller like you would a tennis racket. Or if you were into baseball, you could stand there like you were waiting for a pitch and hit the baseball like you would as you though you were playing baseball. It was kind of cool and really exciting. A lot of people, maybe some of you, might have played that and enjoyed some time. One of the games, though, that they had on there was called Follow the Trail Leader. And it was a pretty simple, straightforward game. You would simply move your arms. Maybe if you got really into it, you might move your legs too. But you could move your arms at the, the rate and the speed that the trail leader was going. If you went too slowly, the trail leader would be kind of waiting up for you, saying, come on, catch up here. But it was really dangerous if you went too fast, because then you'd get ahead of the trail leader and you would fall flat on your face. So it was kind of important that you follow the leader. And it's very important even today that as we follow leaders that we don't get too far ahead of them, otherwise we may fall flat on our face. And that's what we kind of heard throughout our BBS this week. We got to see how Jesus leads the way the kids and the, the, and the uh, teachers that taught this got to show the kids how Jesus leads the way. Whether it was Noah in the ark, when he got up there and could see no land, God led the way safely to dry ground. Whether it was the Israelites and God, once again, giving the Ten Commandments, leading the way for the Israelites as they made their way to the Promised Land. Or whether it was Jesus calling his disciples not once, but also calling them to go and share that good news. Or Jesus leading the way, healing the ten lepers. lepers. Jesus led the way. And yet sometimes, brothers and sisters, maybe we like to follow the leader game. Sometimes maybe we like to get out ahead of Jesus leading the way. And so we have a beautiful passage for us this morning where we're reminded exactly why Jesus leads the way. It's from Romans chapter 11, verse 33, where we read, Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. You see, Jesus leads the way to those unsearchable depths of the riches of wisdom, the wisdom and knowledge of God. He leads us to eternal life. And of course, there's this, as we read the context of this and go further, we see that question that Paul immediately answers. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has ever been his counselor? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we fall into the trap to be that counselor of God, to place ourselves above God or at least on his level where we say, God, I have a few things that maybe you, I should bring to your attention because you're not seeming to do a good job. And unfortunately, it's not just us but other people who would try to be the counselor of God. And every time, they fell flat on their face. It happened with the Israelites. And we have heard this over the past couple Sundays. It's been part of the Bible study here Sunday morning. The Israelites, yes. They were free from the promised land. They heard God. They got to Mount Horeb. God gave them the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites said, well, follow them. But then they would grumble. They grumbled about their leader. They grumbled about the food. They grumbled about the fact they weren't in the promised land yet. They grumbled and complained. And then if they weren't grumbling and complaining, they were just out and outright rebellious. Well, we don't need we don't need just God and God alone. We'll have our other gods, whether it's the golden calf or other foreign gods that God has told us to get rid of. And at times, they fell flat on their face. But it wasn't just the Israelites. The disciples. I mean, you think about it. The 12 disciples, they got to hear the words from God's mouth. They got to see the miracles that God himself performed. And what did they do? One of them said out and outright, Lord, you're never going to go up to Jerusalem. You're never going to suffer and die. Far be it from me to ever let that happen. 
And it wasn't just him. The other disciples, always wondering, why is he going up to suffer and die? Sometimes the disciples saying, who's better? Who's the best of the kingdom of God? And at those times, they could fall flat on their face. Sometimes we too can fall flat on our face. We have the words of God. We have the promises. We have his commands. And yet sometimes we feel that we're qualified to be God's advisor. No, to lead God sometimes. We have that command from God. Honor the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Not just a physical rest, a spiritual rest. And yet sometimes that temptation is great. Sometimes we're led into that sin where we think we have so much to do. We have so many things going on. I'm the most important person here, and I need to do all these things on the list. I don't have time to listen to God. And so I'm going to decide what's right. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing things. I'm going to get these things done. I don't need rest. I don't need a daily rest. I don't need a weekly rest to hear God's word. I have too many important things to do. But we keep going. We keep going. Maybe we burn the candle on both ends. And then eventually, it goes a lot. All because we thought we knew better than God. It's all flat on our face. Sometimes it's the opposite end of the spectrum. Not the I'm so important, but I'm not all that important. Nobody cares about me. I'm worthless. Stupid. Not I, I just, nobody cares. If all of a sudden I disappeared, nobody would notice. And so maybe we say, God, this world would be a lot better place if I weren't in it. And we put ourselves in the place of God. We become its advisor. We give in to despair. And we fall flat on our face. Brothers and sisters, thankfully God leads the way. God leads us out of our despair. God shows us the arrogance of our ways. And yes, the Holy Spirit leads us to sin. And yes, we might feel that guilt pressed down upon us. That spirit-born guilt. But that's not a bad thing. Because that guilt leads us to the ultimate situation. We take that sin. We don't try to do it on our own. We don't try to do nothing about it. Instead, we give it to our leader. In that Nintendo game, like I said, if you ran ahead of the leader, you would fall flat on your face. But if you did fall flat on your face, that leader eventually would catch up to you. He would chase after you, pick you up, and make and you'd start running all over it. And it was the same way with God. With the Israelites. He chased after them. He hunted them down. He pursued them. He never gave up. He sent the prophets again and again and again so that they would know what God had to say to them. So that they would know what God's promise for them was. And he never gave up. Finally, he sent his son to bear their sin. To bear their guilt. To bear their shame. And pay for it all. Even then, some people didn't recognize it. And yet, God never gave up. He still sent the apostles. And there, too, the disciples. You know, Peter himself who was trying to stop everything, who even on the day of Jesus' betrayal was trying to cut off and fight for Jesus to be free, who then later that evening, that night, denied ever knowing Jesus. And there Jesus, full of love and compassion for that little sheep, for that wayward sheep, goes and tells him not once, not twice, but three times to go his lambs. To go share that forgiveness that he himself had given Peter and that the rest of the world needed to hear. And so, brothers and sisters, too, God chases after us. God picks us up. 
And God reminds us of the promises that he has given us. He strengthens us through those very promises. So that nothing in all the world, and so we're reminded as we go to Romans chapter 8, nothing in all the world will be able to separate us from the love of God. And Paul goes, he gets pretty specific about all these things. He says, for I am sure that neither death nor life, neither angels, nor rulers, and when we say rulers here, Paul is very specific. He uses that word to describe about demons in the spiritual realms. Neither demons, neither things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, not your guilt, not your shame, not your supposed self-worthlessness, not all your words can separate you from the love of God. And that is the message that gives us strength and courage now and in the days to come. It's the message that not only we need to hear, but others around us. Think about it. People today are so scared. They're worried. Temp- the tempers that maybe people had or the uh, patience that people had has worn thin with everything going on. Now we have to wear masks. Now we have to do this and that. Uh, now there's still riots going on. The world needs to hear about the promise of God. The world needs to hear about their Savior. The world needs to hear about that wonderful promise of eternal life that Christ has won for us. You see, it all changed on that Easter Sunday morning. No longer were we doomed to death and hell. We were now free. Free from sin. Free from death. Free from the devil's power. And that promise is not just for us alone. It is for others to hear. So brothers and sisters, may we have that courage of the apostles. May that Holy Spirit give us a strong faith, not only to see our Savior in dark times, but also to share with those who have little patience, who have little hope, who may not see the big picture that we see, but we know that one day we shall see clearly that God has loved us dearly and rejoice in that. And so we follow our leader as he leads the way. As he leads the way, way, healing people who are outcasts. Leads the way, giving us his word and his guidance for our life. As he leads the way, calling us to be his disciples and telling us to share that wonderful news. Yes, Jesus leads the way to those eternal, wonderful riches and depths of his treasure. And that treasure is ours, now and for all eternity. So may Jesus be our leader. And then we follow that leader. Until finally, the game is over. The trumpet sounds. And we get to see our Savior face to face. Amen. Please stand. Now may... Now may... Now to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood... To him be all glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Out of thanks for all that God has given us, we bring our offering to his glory. Um, once again, uh, offering plates are at the exits, either in the front or the back. Um, we'll continue with the prayer of the church. And we include in our prayers a prayer of uh, thanks for Brent and Alexis von Stein who were blessed with the gift of a baby girl this past week. We pray. O Lord, mercifully direct and guide us in our journey through this life. Although we are surrounded by change and uncertainty, grant that we begin, continue, and end all our works in you, guided by your word, that we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your grace, be brought safely to you in your eternal kingdom. 
Dear Father of us all, we praise you for the birth of this child born to Brent and Alexis von Stein. Even as your love brought us into life, so we thank you for the loving creation of this new life. Strengthen and bless mother and father. Guide them in the training of this child, that she may grow in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we join in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Please be seated for our next hymn.
Please be seated. I'm glad you could join us in worship today. Uh, be reminded of our Tuesday night service. Uh, make use of that if you uh, can't be with us on Sunday morning. And uh, there are uh, quite a few announcements in there about the school starting up again. Lots of volunteers and help are needed. Uh, please uh, take a look at those uh, opportunities and use them to serve your Lord. Uh, also, uh, Pastor Novak has asked me to announce that uh, some Sunday school teachers are needed for uh, Sunday school and Sunday mornings. A uh, teacher for first and second grade and a teacher for fifth through eighth grade. And uh, next week will be the installation of our new 7th and 8th grade teacher, Mr. Sam Kepsel, in the late service. And finally, we watch our Wells Connection. 